freecoachingtoday.com so to derive the equation for gravitational potential energy we are we are going to use a couple of tricks and we will not use the differential calculus or integral calculus in this method so let's say we have a mass m1 and the mass m2 and the distance between them is r now the force let's let's keep this mass m1 fixed at what we call as an origin and this we call it an x axis now this this mass is pulled by m2 is pulled by m1 by a force that force is given by from the newton's law of gravitation g m1 m2 divided by r square now what we are going to do is we are going to trying to move this mass a tiny amount of distance very small amount of distance such that the distance between this one and this new position is r1 so as we do that since it's pulling this and if you pull this in this direction we will have to do some work what's the magnitude of the work we denote this work by w1 that will be the force f that's acting between these two masses and that force we know is g m1 m2 divided by r square multiplied by the distance between them the distance between them is r1 minus r now what's the distance between the since this we will take the average distance between these two and the average distance is going to be r1 plus r divided by 2 so this work is given by g multiplied by m1 m2 divided by r1 plus r divided by 2 whole square multiplied by we know that the work done is given by the force multiplied by the distance moved and in this case the distance moved is r1 minus r we use here a trick and the trick is r1 plus r divided by 2 is the arithmetic mean of r1 and r and if these two numbers are very small for example if you have 10 and 10.1 then if you take an arithmetic mean it's 10 plus 10.1 divided by 2 it's 10.05 if you take a geometric mean of these two number it's going to be 10 into 10.1 square root and that will also be about the same so we use this trick and in this case the arithmetic mean of these two numbers is the same as the geometric mean and geometric mean is r1 plus r2 divided by 2 this is this is the arithmetic mean and this geometric mean is square root of r1 into r if we use this then we get the work done is g multiplied by m1 m2 divided by this is square root and then it becomes a square becomes r1 r multiplied by r1 minus r if we take this r1 r inside this bracket we get w1 equal to g m1 m2 multiplied by r1 r r1 divided by r1 r is 1 upon r and r divided by r1 r r r can cancel we get 1 upon r1 that we call is uh, let's say equation 1 now we are going to move this mass m2 further right hand side to a new position which is at a distance r2 from this point now there again there will be some work done in moving from distance r1 to r2 what that distance is going to be again the same thing 
we call it W2, which will be G M1 M2. The equation will be the same as we derived in the earlier one. I leave it to you to do it as an exercise. It's going to be 1 upon R1 minus 1 upon R2. We call it equation number 2. So, we keep on moving this mass M2 in tiny distances towards the right. Till what? Till we go to a very very far away point and I call it we go on W1, W2 and so on and so forth and then we come to a point just one last point we call it let's say N minus 2 this distance we are at a distance of R N minus 2 and, the, and then we move it to a distance which is at R N minus 1 so we call it the verb done in W n minus 1 the w n minus 1 is the work done in moving from w n minus 2 to w n minus 1 in the same way w 2 is the work done from moving from r 1 to r 2 that will be g m 1 m 2 1 upon r n minus 1 minus 1 upon r n minus 2 we call it the equation n minus 1 and finally what we do is we move it one more time last time to which we scale call it at a distance r n we now move it from r n minus 1 to r to distance r n and we call it w m the work done is w n is equal to g m 1 m 2 1 upon r n minus 1 upon r n minus 1 minus 1 upon r n and this is equation nth equation now, what we do is the total work done is equal to the sum of all these works, the tiny amount of the words as we move this mass slowly towards the right. If you add this, these equations, what you see, 1 upon R1 and 1 upon R2, R1 gets cancelled, 1 upon R2, 1 work gets cancelled to 1 upon R2 in the next equation and similarly all these inner terms they get cancelled. Sorry this is was to, supposed to be R n minus 2 this was supposed to be R n minus 1. This W2 matches W2 to matches 2 1 matches 1 so it is n minus 1 should match to n minus 1 and this should be n minus 2. In the same way this is going to be R n and this is good. No, this one was right. R n minus two. So R n minus one gets cancelled with R n minus one. So finally, we get G m one m two, which is common in all of them. And then we have one upon R minus one upon R n. Here, what happens is this R n we make it infinity, a very large number something tends to infinity and when Rn is very large 1 upon Rn is equal to 0 so as Rn tends to infinity we have W is equal to G M1 M2 divided by R that is the work we will have to do when moving this mass M2 from this position to infinity so, if we are want to find out the um, gravitational potential, then it's going to be, it's denoted by U, is the, it's going to be a negative number which we defined as minus W and it's going to be minus G M1 M2 divided by R. Now this, uh, <coughs> We can use this formula to find out the amount of the work done, for example, that will be required in moving the mass m from m this place r1 to some place rx. Hope that it helps. Thank you. In this lecture, we are going to learn about gravitational potential energy. We know from Newton's law that 
if there is a mass m1 and if there is another mass m2 then there is a force of attraction between these two masses let's say they are separated by a distance r now if i <coughs> release this mass then it starts moving away in other words the system has some potential some potential to do something or you can also say if this mass is somewhere far away and we try to bring it closer to the mass m2 we have to do some work now in this case there is a force of attraction so when we try to bring this mass together we don't do the work we can say that we get the work so basically we don't have to do it it's automatically attracted and it we get the work so fundamentally we define the gravitational potential energy as the work done in bringing the this mass from infinity to this point the value of this gravitational potential energy is negative because we don't get the work we don't do the work we actually receive the work we will derive the formula for the gravitational potential energy i will first write the formula here it's denoted by u the gra we are finding out the gravitational potential energy for two masses m1 and m2 separated by a distance r is given by g m1 m2 divided by r g is the universal gravitational constant m1 m2 are the masses and r is the distance between them so the negative value says that we don't do the work we get the work in other words if if i ask you the question what is the amount of the work required you will be doing when you will be bring this, this when we will take taking this mass from this position to infinity because if you try to take this mass away the force of attraction will not allow you to take it away you will have to do the some work to pull it away in that case if you want to find out what's the work done in taking this mass m2 to infinity that will be w equal to g m1 m2 divided by r now there are two ways we can derive this formula both of them will be will depends upon the fact that there is a force between m1 and m2 and if you move them by a little amount you do a work this that's denoted by f equal to force into the distance that is moved Now, since it's a it's a work, it's not a vector quantity. It's a scalar quantity. It just has the magnitude. It does not have any direction. The force has a direction. For example, the force acting between the masses m one f two has a definite direction. So, let's start with the derivation of the formula. 